Yeah. Tim's oh. Tim's hooked up right now. What y'all catch them on? Drop shot. Really? Yeah. Okay. Matt, Matt got a good one on a kite tech. Who's the one with him? Hey, 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 let me call you back. Okay. You have a friend? Yeah. I feel like they're out the other end of the boat. Yeah. Need net, Tim? I don't think so. There she is. No, it's not a bad one, though. Yeah, you need the net. Sheen on the water. Oh, you're seeing. I see something on the bottom and four life jackets. Uh oh. Huh. You have a sunken boat? Yeah, I think a boat in one of those cliffs went down. I think you're right. That one right there. I see it. A boat's underwater. Third cliff. Great. Hey guys, Matt Allen here, Tim Little. Our buddy Eric Cooper. We're out here in Michigan chasing smallmouth. Actually, had an epic day bunch of giants in the box we can hardly even get them to fit gonna take some pictures here quick but man we came around the corner started seeing an oil slick on the water gas on the water couldn't figure out what we were looking at started seeing life jackets floating there's a boat in this slip that sunk big old yacht went to the bottom so we've called the coast guard we didn't even know they're like literally right there we're watching them rush to load up their boat to come over here because this boat sunk there's oil everywhere these people's belongings are just drifting away out into lake michigan it is no joke and we just just happen to be here there's nobody on the boat no idea what went on it just sunk it's crazy we'll check back in with you Yes, hello. I was calling to report a um, a sunken boat actually right here by your Coast Guard station. All right, sir. Um, what is your name? It's Eric Cooper. Eric, uh, how do you spell your last name? Cooper, C-O-O-P-E-R. Yeah. And you said right by the station. Yeah, it's, um, so if you can station and turn and go right here into Long Lake on the southeast side, and the third stall in, um, a boat has sunk in there, and all the belongings are floating out into the lake. And, and the fuel. It's, and it's putting a lot of fuel and oil in the water. Okay, you said um, around like Blue Boathouse, uh, east side? Yes. Oh, west side. Uh, west, side. Um, west side. Yeah, kind of the, the southwest side. So if you come out of where your boats are docked and come through the little channel, and it's, it's right to your left, and it's a third stall. here but it's that third stall right there. Yeah, you got lots of life jackets. Third one? Yeah lots of life jackets are floating. Alright. Thank you guys very much. Yeah thank you. You got uh, three life jackets in the water. Alright. You got four life jackets in the water. Dude, the life jacket doesn't even have a it's got its tag on it still. Brand new. Did you guys know if anyone contacted the no, I don't think, think so. We, we called just called you. you guys. All right, fantastic. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the sheen started down there a little ways. Hey, somebody go for it. You can find that sheen. Right. He said from the third one right here on the left. 
Yeah. See if you see the boat on the ground, you know, sunk. All right, guys, unfortunately, we weren't able to stick around to the end. Coast Guard took things over. They had it under control, so we got out of their way. But I'll tell you what, now that I've had time to process what we saw there, I mean, seeing a couple hundred thousand dollar boat just go to the bottom. Brand new. I mean, the tags on the life jackets. Were everything, off. right, everything was brand new. Life jackets are brand new. The boat looked brand new. It was pristine. Uh, what a bummer. I mean, can you imagine? Those guys were about to get a phone call. We didn't get to stick around for that, but they were about to get a phone call to let them know that their yacht had gone down. I mean, that's so much money wrapped up there. My thoughts, you know, as bass fishermen, our bilge areas are really hard to get to. And because of that, oftentimes, as the boats are aging, we are really slow to worry about those minor, minor leaks. I go on a lot of boats, you go on a lot of boats, most of the bass boats we got on, we get on have, you know, guys like, oh, I got a little bilge leak or, oh, I take in a little water somewhere and you don't really even think about it. I'll tell you what, you got to take the time once a year at a minimum to get down in that bilge. And the reason this came up to me is because that boat was tied to the dock. And that is a sweet boat. It was in good shape. It's tied off to the dock. Clearly they thought they were good. Protected from the wind. Protected from the wind. It didn't get swamped. It something let in water. It's either a, it's either a, a bilge fitting. Um, I mean, there's minor things that will flood a boat. The O-ring in a bilge pump is a major one that goes bad. Uh, the plug itself, the rubber and the plug will go bad. Once a year at a minimum, you need to get down on the bottom of your boat, replace your plug, replace those bilge pumps or at the least the o-rings like the drop-in replacements you don't even replace the pump itself the drop-in replacements are so cheap and just check those fittings put your boat in the water pull your batteries out and look make sure you're not taking on water because like those people you're going to tie it off to a dock somewhere think you're good come out in the morning and have a boat land on the bottom do you want to add anything uh sure yeah it's you know Luckily, you know, we kind of pieced it together with what, what was going on, what we saw. It shows the importance of keeping your head on a swivel and paying attention to your surroundings anytime you're out on the water, anytime you're anywhere, actually. But, uh, you know, Matt seeing the sheen, uh, I can't remember who saw it first or whatever, but then seeing the life jackets and then realized, hey, I think we have a situation here. Right. Um, you just pay attention to your surroundings, right? And luckily for us, we were super close to the Coast Guard. Uh, there was a lot of uh, petroleum-based products. You got that sheen on the water. So we were able to make the call, get the authority, the proper authorities there and let them take over and do their job. You know, the quicker that you can get them there and let them do their work, their job, uh, the easier it is, the better it is for all of us. You know, we don't want those petroleum-based products floating around in our fisheries, right? We don't want to have to worry about cleanup. So the sooner they get there, uh, they can put boom around it and kind of corral it all in and it's it's easier and better for all of us. Right, right. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, very different from what we normally do, but definitely an eye opener. You know, we're just out there fishing. Next thing you know, we're looking at, you know, the value of a typical house laying on the bottom of the lake. It happens. Make sure it doesn't happen to you. Do the little things, pay attention. And when you are out there, like Tim said, always be looking because you might save somebody else from the same situation. We hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.